Here we go. Okay, great. Avoid legal snags, but are, you're being recorded. Okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for watching Be Better Golf. I'm on the phone right now with Birdie and me. All right, there we got half and half. All right, so uh, yeah, this is Be Better Golf channel where we talk about different, unique ID voices in the world of golf about how to get better at golf. And uh, a person who has really dedicated a large portion of his life to helping people get better is uh, Birdie Cordell, who is on the phone from England. Hey, Brady. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, so uh, so Brendan and I have been communicating over the last couple of months about uh, uh, g the golf swing and how to essentially trying to uh, enable more golfers around the world to to uh, get better at golf and to to experience how they can improve and take ownership of of the feelings they should be feeling when they hit the golf ball. Um, so yeah. So Birdie and Birdie, Birdie just let everybody know um, is the inventor, right? Inventor. Yeah, that's right. Inventor of the these DST clubs, which are um, very, very popular on uh, basically every tour in the world, and also at a, at a lot of just uh, club golfers. See this line here. So this is a very important part of of it. What's the name of this line, Birdie? So uh, when we first started, it was called the hand position alignment marker, but now we're just simply calling it the impact line. So the concept behind that is when, uh, when you strike the ball, if that line points up to your eyes, then you will have lag tension. So the handle of the golf club will be leading the club face through the ball and you'll be able to control the club head. And if that line points over your right shoulder or your trail shoulder, if you're right-handed, then you will have thrown away that lag tension and you will be essentially in the casino and playing golf with your right hand alone. So you're, you're, you're sort of going to be much less consistent with your ball strike. Yeah, I've had these clubs. Uh, this is my wedge, my uh, DST wedge. See, it's, it's hard to see on the video, but it's dramatically bent backwards. And also a bent backwards eight iron and then two transition clubs. And uh, it the, really helped my impact. Bertie, one thing I wanted to talk to you about is that a lot of people say that when you're when you're really concentrating in your golf swing about getting better impact, a lot of people say that that you're trying, you're you're thinking too much about uh, positions and put, and that's not how you get it. Um, when people come to you and they say like, "Well, you can't freeze impact, or or you, or it's not a good idea to really concentrate on a certain any certain position in the golf swing," uh, what what do you tell them usually to? Well, the, 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 first, the first thing is, is that um, re recognizing that the only critical position of the golf swing is impact, right? So, so it's not about the clubs um, and it's not necessarily about what position or what your swing pattern or swing style looks like at the top of the backswing or halfway down or anything like that. Because there's, perfect, there's, there's tons of examples of people like Shane Lowry, who's across the line at the top versus Ricky Fowler, who's about the most laid off person in the top of the backswing. So if you compare those two as extremes, um, they both managed to hit the ball incredibly well and they're both on the PGA Tour. So the answer is they, they, they must be doing something together at impact, which is very, very similar. And that's something at impact um, that is similar is their common denominator. Uh, and that is to have lag tension at impact where the club shaft is trailing behind an extension of your lead forearm. So I've, I've, I've got a picture here. Sorry, the phone's going off over there. But I've I got think a picture thing, here. Bernie, you... maybe bring up that picture of my, my driver. So this is after I got the DST club and was yeah. working on it. Um, I, I sent some swings to Bertie just to, to show him before my driver was leaned backwards hmm, about in at uh, – about maybe eight inches less than this. So tell us, how does this picture show us? This is this is me, my driver. So how does this picture show us lag tension, Bertie? So basically, you can see here that the the club shaft is at impact, or the, the club head is against the ball, and the club shaft is trailing behind an extension of your lead forearm. So you don't necessarily lead, need lead forward shaft lean when you're hitting a driver. You just need lag tension. So how, how that, that basically differs here, um, because when you're hitting a, a wedge, the ball position is further back in your stance. So let me just give you an example of 
the geometry of impact here. Let me just uh, uh, try and bring up another picture. Um, so uh, that's my wife on the phone. Okay. So there you go. So here's the geometry of impact. You can see the wedge, an eight iron, and a driver. And the, 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 the essentially the, the position my body is in is the same position. It's just that the ball position moves further forwards in the stance. But oh, so, so I can see that that you do have different amounts of lean on each one. Exactly. You have, yeah. you have the same amount of what you would call lag tension on, on each club. Exactly that. So my body shape or the, the, the geometry of my, my, uh, the club shaft, my lead forearm back to my eyes is the same with all three impact positions. It's the only thing that's changed is because the ball has moved progressively forwards in my stance, um, the, 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 the sort of the shape of, uh, you know, impact changes a little bit or, you know, the perception changes a little bit. But essentially, I've got the same amount of lag tension in the, each impact position. Now, the, the, the interesting thing about uh, this is that if we're able to triangulate the correct position at impact, all golf should be about is trying to sync up or synchronize our downswing movements to release the club in the correct position or to yeah. reach extension after we've hit the golf ball. So we've essentially, I'll just put uh, your um, stop screen sharing here. Um, so essentially, if we're able to um, synchronize our downswing movements so we reach the position we know we need to be in at impact to have lag tension, then it, it, all the other positions in golf are, are sort of a byproduct of reaching the correct position at impact. So we kind of re work backwards or re reverse engineer our, our golf swings from where we know we need to be to control the club head. Um, it, seem, it seems like, Bertie, the most elusive trick in golf, uh, for me anyway, is to get that lag, to say, on an iron. To get, like, there's some golfers that I was seeing, like Peter Sr. and other golfers, they'll have a lot of lag tension through impact. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of even shaffling with irons through impact. But they, they'll do it without, with taking a very thin divot. Yeah. Usually, like if I do obtain shaffling and a lot of uh, and some lag tension, I, I can do it, but it it makes the club attack very steep. Yeah. So it seems like the trick is have a lot of shaffling, but with a proper shallow attack. What's the combo that that you need to do to be able to get that? Do you think? So so basically, that's just a question of uh, uh, of, of club path into impact. So basically, if you if you've got a, a very steep angle of attack, or you're coming slightly from out to in, you're going to have a steep angle of attack, and this also depends on your ball position as well. But assuming you have a, a, a for sake of argument, uh, the ball fairly central in your stance, um, I'm just going to have to take this very quickly. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Deli, I'm just being recorded on Skype, so I'm going to have to call you back, okay? Um, so, um, so basically, if, if the ball is in the center of your stance and you're coming from a slightly out to in, you're going to be quite steep if you've got forward shaft lean and you're going to be taking a fairly heavy divot. If you, if you have the ball in the center of your stance and you're coming from a shallower um, plane or from slightly inside the path to outside the path, you're going to have a very... Uh, you may still have forward shaft lean, but you'll take a, a bacon slice or a thin, a thin divot rather than the big thick divot. Okay. Um, so that's really what what uh, what you're what you're wanting to achieve is you're you're wanting to shallow out the angle of attack, but still have forward shaft lean or lag tension when you hit the ball. And that's that's essentially um, you know uh, the, uh, one of the, one of the sort of the holy grails kind of things in golf, really. And that's that's what a lot of the guys on tour are good at. Right. So, Bertie, you work with um, through DST. You've met a, like a lot of. Uh, millionaire golfers that are that are earning their living. Uh, what is the thing that that the tour players like the most about these clubs, and how do they use them? So that that particular one, the the compressor with the curved shaft, mm -hmm. um, that it, it does two things. Firstly, to the reasons why the the tour players use those clubs is slightly different from the club pro, uh, the, the the club golfer. The club golfer uses that because it introduces the concept of a forward forward lean or forward, you know, the handle being in front of the club head. Uh, through the use of that impact line and the curved shaft, they understand or st get pretty familiar with the movement that their body has to reach in order to get that line to point to their eyes at impact. The club, the, the tour play, players use that club for a slightly different reason. Because it's curved, um, 
when you look at it from a face on perspective, you can see it's curved. But when you look at it from a down the line perspective, suddenly the shaft is straight. Yeah. So if you deliver that golf club into impact and you're not on plane, then the shaft wants to destabilize. Either it'll under rotate and you'll hit a shank or you'll over rotate and hit a hook. So they're using it to kind of learn and to keep their, 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 their swing on plane. They're sort of the minimal torque in the wrists whilst they're moving through impact that delivers a square club face for the longest period of time through the ball. And that's, that's kind of re the reason why we've got a crazy number. We've got sort of like 21 of the top 27 players in the world using uh, the DST compressors. Wow. If you guys are interested in getting a club, uh, before we continue talking, if you guys are interested in getting one, there's a, if you use the promo code DST, be better golf, all, all one word, uh, there's a great discount, 15% off. Uh, in, and also, uh, most of these don't have that. It's in USA and Europe, too. So 15% all the uh, DST products. So they're using it kind of uh, in a combination, some training, but, but a lot of like warm up. Yeah, I mean, essentially, some, some guys use it more religiously than others, but essentially, in a large number of cases, it's the first club out of the bag just to give them the feeling of the sinking up their, their, their downswing maneuver into impact. And, and it's, if it's like a comfort blanket. If you, that's where you know you need to be, you get the DST compressor out of the bag and it kind of familiarizes them where they're, of what they're wanting to do when they're playing, you know, a wedge shot or a driver. It's still the same geometry through geometry of impact through the ball so that's the reason why the the, uh, the tour players use it but what's right. really exciting is that we're coming up with a uh, um a course now to enable club professionals around the world to uh, become dst approved instructors and we were talking about this a little bit earlier and brendan and i are looking at the idea of um getting together and doing some filming to introduce it to to a large number of people um but the, the, the meat in the sandwich in that one is basically um, we've been working at DST on creating some physical drills with some apparatus that force you to reach the optimal impact position and the visual key with the, the, the DST clubs together in combination really are incredibly powerful to allow golfers to almost take ownership of what they're trying to do and feel what they need to do for themselves. Because in coaching, there's a lot of people who give a lot of instruction, but essentially it's the student who needs to understand and create those and build those feelings for themselves in order to synchronize their, their downswing into the correct impact position. So I'm kind of looking forward to spending some time with you, Brendan. Yeah, that'll be fun. I think Bertie's going to be flying out to California and we're going to be doing these instructional fun kind of deep dives on really how to get people from broken to to lag tension at impact and also i definitely want to make sure to have some time to actually play golf on the course because uh, i that's that's really always a lot of fun yeah, um, well, but before you, you mentioned this so i know it i, I know we, we we kind of want to do it but it's all very well if we go through this ourselves um, you know, introducing this to you so you can understand it and do some drills together. But it'd be fun to get some guys um, who are in the area and would like to come along and, and be sort of guinea, guinea pigs so we can get, you know, some, some before and after images of, of what this training is all about. Yeah, if you guys are interested in coming out during during those videos, and uh, we'll be doing them somewhere in Southern California, maybe, maybe like Palm Springs area possibly, maybe right around Long Beach, I'm not sure. Um, but put a comment below. Uh, with your email. We're looking for people that have basically plateaued. They've always, they've never gotten that impact they've wanted to get, and they're just desperate to get that um, lag tension in their swing, which, which we talked about this a little before, Bertie. About better, uh, getting better lag tension or more of a Y look and impact. They, uh, they, they say hey, you really shouldn't be concentrating on that, but that really is something, just talk to us a little bit about why it is so important um, if you want to play golf and know where your ball is going to go, why is it so important to keep lag tension? Like, do, go a little bit deep on the physics of why is it so difficult if you totally reach a uh, full extension before impact, why is it so difficult then to have any like power or sense of direction 
Okay, so so without sort of uh, visual aids and, and stuff like that to, to, to go with, basically in golf, um, if you lose control of the club head before you hit the ball, then you have no control over where the ball will go. So the whole purpose of the golf swing is to maintain control of the club face until after we've struck the ball, okay? So that, 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 is, that is the be-all and end-all of golf, okay? It'd be nice to have some club head speed in there as well. So you've got club head speed and control over the club face, but that's basically it. So there are, there is, it, it's, it's provable, and I've proven it in physics, that there is a point in everyone's swing that they reach full extension. And what I mean by that is when the shaft of the golf club overtakes an extension of the player's lead forearm, that is full extension. And if you reach full extension before you hit the ball, the only thing that can control the club head or club face is the, is the trail hand. So that's a fast-moving twitch muscle controlling something at 90 miles an hour or over 100 miles an hour, depending on what club you're hitting. But it's Because, just to get a little deep on it, because if this is at full extension, right, yeah. then the trail hand is the only one that has a little bit of lag tension left because there's still a little angle here yeah. to control it. So, that so, so that's, a, that's a fine sort of motor muscle. Uh, and basically, you're, you're trying to use timing in your right hand to square the club face up. It's the only thing you're relying on. Right. If you compare that to the best ball strikers throughout history, modern day PGA players and Lee Trevino and back in time, Ben Hogan and um, Byron Nelson and all those guys, is they were incredibly consistent and they were long and consistent because they were able to deliver the club face through the ball. So in a much more consistent way, so that they reached full extension after impact instead of before it. Right. Right. And, and so they were able to basically um, uh, keep the club face pointing at the target for a little bit longer through impact and also deliver a club face with more moments of inertia. So there's two things or three things that combine to make speed in the swing. Right. One is head speed, how fast you can swing the club head. Number two is where on the club face you make contact with the ball, so your strike pattern. And number three is something called moment of inertia. And it comes down to the moment arm and how long that is. And if you release the club too early, the moment arm is very short. So in effect, it's like using a, a very light hammer versus if you've got a very long moment's arm, it's, it's like having a very heavy hammer. Uh, and if you're using you know, the, the same swing speed, the ball's going to go much further if you've got more moments of inertia. Yeah, I went and talked to a golf pro down in San Diego that talked a lot about moment of inertia and that being a big part of whether or not like, you're getting a good smash factor. Yeah. And so is there like some kind of like experiment in physics or some way, visual way you could show me where like, okay, this is going the same speed as this and it's the same weight as this, but this one has a bigger moment inertia than that one does. Because mm -hmm. after I talked to him, I remember trying to think like, well, how could I build something almost like, like, okay, here's a short moment arm, but it, make it go, you know, 50 miles an hour. And here's a long moment arm, but make it go 50 miles an hour and see which one goes faster. Is there anything you ever heard of like that? Uh, I haven't built a model. Uh, but, right. but uh, you or know, anything in the physical world that like I could kind of well if you if you think about it if you if you if you have a um, an <laughs> axis right because it's just like almost like this force that like it's beyond just speed and mass there's yeah. also this moment arm thing that you're talking about yeah so 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 basically the, yeah. there's two there's two elements to how long the moment arm is okay number one um, uh, it's about how heavy the the uh, in centrifugal terms or centrifugal force, how heavy the, uh, the the club head is when it's hitting the ball. If it's if it's heavier because there's a longer moment arm, you're going to get more compression on the golf ball. And number two is the longer the arm, the slower it rotates around the post, right? So therefore, the club face is squarer for longer on a long moment arm than a short moment arm. So if you can imagine having a moment arm, which is the length of the club shaft only, the club face is going to be shutting really quickly. Right, which is difficult to time and get right. But if it, on a long moment arm, it's going to be rotating much slower, right? So the club face stays longer or square to the target for a little bit longer. So there's there's all sorts of these things that we can uh, go through and discuss in, in more depth when we we, we come out there. But um, yeah, well, because when... I had all these after talking to him, I had all these physics physics people who were like big into physics or engineers or um, professors or whatever that. I, I wasn't really getting it, but I, I would love to think of some way where everything's the same, 
except the moment arm in this one's longer than the moment arm in this one and and see if the ball goes further you know yeah it's not that's not quite as that's not the only contributing element to this as well because right. if if the moment arm is broken or basically if you're if you reach full extension before you hit the ball yeah. then the hinge point becomes your lead wrist instead of your shoulder so then basically you're adding loft as well so you're not only hitting the ball with a, a lighter club club face or club head but you're adding loft so you're getting a higher shot higher ball flight um as well as a less power behind it so you, you're kind of losing on both yeah yeah. More, okay. That yeah, that's really cool. All right, all all really interesting stuff that we'll get into more when uh, we get Birdie out of the rain and into uh, sunny California. So uh, <laughs> yeah, guys, we're we're looking for some some real cool uh, cooperation from you guys with this. So if you have um, really looking for those plateaued golfers, if you, if you're a golfer that just feels that you're just totally plateaued and you would love to improve your impact, uh, we'll have you come out and be one of our guinea pigs at uh when we meet up if you guys would like to try would you guys would like to try the dst compressor club go to dstgolf.com and on there you th there's a spot to enter a promo code put in dst be better golf and you'll get 15 percent off you you got to try it because it really uh one thing that that we say at, at the be better golf schools that we do is you don't want to like give out give out people feelings and hope that the good mechanics come from the feelings. You would rather uh, see if you agree with this, Bertie. You would rather say, "Here are the good mechanics," and then you tell me what did that feel like, right? Yeah, I mean, the the, the ultimate is to allow the the golfer to uh, to give them a drill where they essentially understand the drill, and the drill is focused on something physical, right? So if they achieve something physical then they can own what that feels like. And it's all about taking ownership and building a feeling and a movement and owning the feeling of that movement for the, for the, for the individual. And it's no good me standing there and barking instructions at you if you don't understand and feel what you, know, you should be doing yourself. So our, the instruction at DST is all about um, synchronizing your swing into a position that you, is a desirable position to have lag tension. And then you own that feeling. That's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's cool because there's a lot of debate in golf about how you should do certain things this is just like hey here it is and you can be a person that rotates a ton you can be a person that throws a ton you can whatever you want to do but i mean the 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 equalizing factor is this this lag tension thing in ball striking huh yeah, so yeah. you got that is what you got to get to all right yeah. cool what about last question birdie what about um will there be in your game are you going to think about trying to get back into it and do European senior tour or, or anything like that coming uh, up. What uh, are you, you're, you're like 42 now. Yeah. I'm eight years away <laughs> um, and, and running a company and got a small family. So we're kind of preoccupied at the moment, but the, I'd, I'd love to play more. Um, I, I, I play all, too, too infrequently at the moment, which is a great sadness, but I'd love to play more golf and um, I absolutely love it when I do. Um, and I'm 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 just as hooked on golf as I was when I picked up the club for the first time as a junior. So yeah. it's uh, it's it's something I'd like to do more and more. Well, I can tell you, nothing would promote DST better than to see to see you out there. So um, it might it might be a worthwhile deal. <laughs> yeah. It'd be so, good. Um, all right, I'm I'm like the uh, the devil in your ear trying to get you to do these uh, <laughs> irresponsible things. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, you guys, DST also has their own YouTube channel, has some really cool videos explaining the, uh, my favorite one is when you, I was gonna ask you, what is the, the kind of camera that you have that takes such great slow motion videos? Because even my iPhone at 240 frames a second, only every once in a while will you actually catch that moment of impact, it's so fast. Yeah, it's a, it's a Sony, uh, R100, I think, or something oh. like that. It basically takes, and it's got a global shutter on it. So mm. instead of, you know, if if you, I take it as an example here, but if m most old camcorder camcorders uh, only take sort of like thirty frames a second, and people that have massive amounts of uh, lead deflection, it looks like the shaft is bowed this way, right? Yeah, because it's building the image from the bottom up. So the things on the bottom happened earlier in time than the things on the top. So then you get, but a global, it's like, it's the way that old film used to be where boom, the whole image produces at the same time. And then if you have lots of frame rates per second, then you get a really clear shaft, shaft angle, you know, 
uh, an image of the shark, which really is what you know close close to the truth, basically. Yeah, so um, that's important when 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 we're kind of analysing gold swings to have a high frame rate and a global shutter, and then you're onto it, basically. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm gonna click this. Stop recording. All right, thanks for watching, everybody.